There it is. <clears throat> you, this technique may not be new. This may be one of your normal techniques to fish with. But for me, I learned this on the water just using logic. Typically logical explanation for this. Of, you know, these fish would not bite. I found thousands upon thousands of crappie. Now, I did not find monster schools of pound and a half to two pounders today, but I did find mega schools of eight to 11 inch fish. But in order to get one to commit was a job in itself. Even for me, I mean, I am watching uh, the live scope and seeing the fish react to my baits. And I mean, I threw the whole kitchen sink back. But one thing I did find out that I could fire up these fish in order to get them to bite. And that's what I want to talk about on today's video. Is a way to catch them when there's so much bait. Because in the early fall, you have a lot of, you know, shad and minnows and whatnot. And they're just everywhere. Like every brush pile you hit has two or three pods around it. Uh, there's four or five pods around the bridge all through the creek channels. I mean, there's nothing but bait and What these fish do is at night because if you didn't know crappy feed majority of the time You know between midnight and 6 a.m You know, that's what they say that that's, don't take that with a grain of salt or I teach you about catching these crappy that just do not want to bite and you know getting out there and actually getting in the bite we're gonna thank today's video sponsor into the am now if you're like me i'm a bigger guy check out this t-shirt you know it fits me perfectly and it'll fit you too if you're a little guy but i mean they've got awesome designs check this out this is a astronaut on a moon with a fishing net like who would ever even think of that so for all my subscribers and anybody that watches my channel, they're actually giving you 10% off your entire order. Now these guys have been supporting the channel here for a little over three weeks and they've got bundle deals. You can grab hoodies, you can do all this. So please give them a check out and thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. And the way you get to their website is intotheam.com slash turnerfishing. And that'll get you 10% off your entire order. Now, let me go teach you how to catch these crappy. Mostly feed at night. So what happens is when you get there at six, seven o'clock in the morning, these fish do not want to bite because they're already full. I mean, if you went to an all you can eat buffet, you ate like two or three plates or five if you're big like me, it'd be a whole different story. But at the same time, if you offer me a dessert after eating all you can eat, I'm telling you, I might just take a bite. I couldn't have enough. Uh, okay, one more. I'm gonna have one more and then that'll be it. And if you sit there and logically think about it, the whole might just take a bite, that's the whole point of this whole video. If you can get that crappy, to say I might just take a bite then you can get that crappy to take a bite so when the largemouth uh, the largemouth of stripers crappy brim whatever is eating the bait you've got a bait ball they're sitting there munching on the bait munching 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 you've got the bigger and little fish you know schooled up up under them what happens to the shad that they do not eat they hit the shad like a largemouth hits the bait, kills it. A shad's gonna fall. The fish up under it are gonna eat it before it hits the bottom. And that's why you take a bait like the snipe beaver. Now I was using this bait in the monkey milk color because it's a lot more of a natural color which I'll show you what monkey milk looks like. I don't have any of the snipe beavers in monkey milk right now. Because I sold my last ones the other day. But basically this is monkey milk. It is a translucent blue white milky color that as you turn it, it shines in so many different reflections. 
with black in it to imitate a big fish. Now with the snipe beaver, the reason this jig was so effective at what I'm calling the jerk is a technique that I use. See, I take these little appendages that come with it all. So you're left with nothing but a grub body and a big flat tail. And I'm gonna rig one up for you real quick. I got a 132 ounce jig head, number six hook. We're gonna go straight through the middle, just like that. And we're literally just gonna push up until he gets right there at that tail and we're gonna pull through. And that's how you rig up a snipe beaver. You want the hook kind of coming right out the back where the tail is. But the way to do this technique, I was using a 10 foot uh, ACC crappy stick. You can use any kind of 10 foot rod you got. But a little bit stiffer is actually better for this technique. Now I know the ACC sticks are really stiff, but this one kind of works with it. So I've got that rigged up on a 10 foot ACC crappy stick with a Fluger reel six pound test vicious line uh, with a loop knot and a small split shot so I could find it on live scope better. Now you don't need live scope for this, you just need to know that the fish are there and what depth they're at. What you can figure out with your sonar up front. So what I figured out was when I first dropped my jig down, as the jig was descending into the fish that I would find around these brush piles and bridge pilings, you know, one or two may come up as it's falling to check it out say hey you know you look pretty good but then they wouldn't commit they'd swim off i'm good. like come on how do i get that fish to bite there he is oh he got off i said they're not biting it as it's just sitting there or swimming there I'm having to actually you know in bass fishing we call it a reaction strike so I guess you can call it the same thing but there's so much bait because we're just going to the fall that you've got to be a little bit different with your presentation you know they've got so much food that they can eat already so you've really got to make them bite more or less there he is oh show y'all what i'm fishing right now so it's, it's just a a little little brush pile 16 to 17 feet of water and there's a big i guess stripers and stuff jumping all around me i mean there's just wads of bait that's what i'm saying you've got to be different so i'm putting it right above them and then i'm popping it i mean not no light pop i mean i'm forcefully jerking this thing and then i'm jerking it then i'm pausing for a little bit letting them check it out and i'm gonna pop it one good time and let it flutter down i'm actually gonna stick this out a little bit further Oh, he had it. <laughs> Pull my pants down. I've done on like any normal cast that I'm doing, you know, I'm holding it a centimeter above the fish. Uh, I'm figuring out where the head of the fish is, where the tail of the fish is. I'm trying to get these fish to commit. Uh, I pick up my little rod, I'm swimming it past them real slow. 
And I mean, a few of them would follow, but it was never an aggressive follow. So I, I took the pole back out, as you can see from the clips behind me. And when I got one's attention, like if one would come check it out, I would literally jerk this rod, not as hard as you can, but an aggressive jerk up, straight up. And what happens when you do that with the small jig head, like a 132 or a 164, is as it's falling back, this big tail on the snipe beaver is going to pick up water. And it's going to make it flutter on the way down. This jig is going side to side, side to side on the way down. And what that does is it imitates a dying bait fish. And some of these crappy, you know, they're not going to miss the opportunity to eat a free meal. Even though they're full from the night before or the day of, you know, gorging on all this bait fish, when I would snap the rod, and I, I mean, you had to have the fish's attention, but when you snap the rod, they would bite it on the fall every time. But finding that one fish that is interested was the, the battle. But we found enough, you know, that were interested and able to snap the rod up and they, they're going to bite it on the fall so when you're detecting this bite you've got to watch your line i don't care if you've got the best rod in the world you cannot feel this bite you know you've got to watch your line jump and every fish i caught my line jumped and i set the hook and there he was but go get this technique to try if you have a, a big tail bait or order you some snipe beavers off the website